GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discussion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Star Trek, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the GNT show. Our continuing mission, to explore Star Trek storytelling, to seek out new worlds and interesting characters, to boldly go where no show has gone before. Naomi Wildman. I was setting it up. Welcome to the GNT show, where obviously we have no script. Yeah, let's just get this puppy started. As always, the beautiful, the lovely, the high-booted, short-skirted, and big-breasted Terry Lynn. (laughs) That would be me. Admiral Shaw. She's badass. It's Ceridium (laughs) Cup Day. (laughs) Good morning. It's Sunday on the GNT show. You know the worst part of this morning? It's not the getting up early. It's the fact they're making me wear clothes to do the show. It's time for coffee (laughs) class. Strap on your helmets, boys and girls. It's going to get rough. Oh, it's going to be one of those mornings. Let me put on my seatbelt my helmet with the little blinky light on top. For safety. Well, we decided. <laughs> if we were going to do the GNT show, Man. one of the things we said was no standards. GNT show does not go on the air because we're ready. It goes on the air because it's 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. Mike could have snapped by then and killed us both. Pain sticks for Mike, evidently. <laughs> we have our production meetings on the air. Well, it's the best way to get you to adhere to things. Yeah, you've now set be. an expectation. Oh, That's the thing about disclaimer. the GNT show is we set no expectations. I need more coffee. Wow. This... I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to do general news or Star Trek news. And I this is Harry having a series of small it's strokes, news. actually. Well, it doesn't take long for this show to, to deteriorate, <laughs> does it? straight the fuck downhill. <laughs> I don't always podcast, but when I do, I G&T. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the G&T Show, episode 178. I'm Terry Lynn. Joel on True Pock Knockers. How you doing? It's Gettysburg 7. There she is, my left, your right. We're still wearing um, the, the remnants of her Super Bowl party gear, <laughs> depressed look on her face, smudge. Look at the look at the, the smudged eye makeup and the, the green. It's Terry. Live and long to- and prosper, everybody. And to my right, your left, he's over there working the controls like the Emerson Lake and Palmer keyboardist. It's Ceridium. I should not have taken a lesson from Jordy LaFord's School of Engineering and should have followed Montgomery Scott's example and padded all my estimates with Scott's whiskey. Yes, you're right. You should have. When are you going to learn Scott's the master? Yeah, that's why he's a miracle worker. You know, that's it's like exactly right. When, when 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 it's crunch time, he just cuts out the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> however, however, there is one thing that Jordy can do far better than Scott. Oh, yeah, well, hey, <laughs> run through <laughs> closing doors. You know, roll. <laughs> there's something else he can do better. Coolant leak. There's a coolant leak. Be a creeper with not real women. If I, I don't know. I, if given the opportunity, I think Scott might have fallen for something like a minuet. No way. Yeah. No way. Yeah. No yeah, he, way. Yeah. 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 Although Scott was far more into boats, I think. I don't know. He was just... <laughs> it's not a hot dog. It's a blueberry muffin in some say all. The blueberry muffin? Mm-hmm. She says, was Nick eating a hot dog or recovering from dental intervention? <laughs> I am... Um, uh, well, let's... It's let's, a coffee. giant blueberry muffin time. from the uh, local diner. That sounds nice. It is. Ellen and, Ellen and I had a, a Twister's fix yesterday. Twister's is a local uh, burrito, New Mexican joint, kind of a fast food place. Um, um, a lot of Breaking Bad was filmed in, although they named it something else. And oh uh, yeah, and right on. It's uh, I don't know. They have just really they serve breakfast burritos all day long, and they're really great red chili and really good tacos. So we kind of like did it up right around noon yesterday. And now I'm I'm still full. <laughs> I'm still full. Where's that place you took us with the pancakes the size of small villages in Eastern Europe? <laughs> Oh, it had to be the range. Had to be the range. Yeah. It had the art on the walls and everything. Yeah. 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 That's the range. The range is, uh, we we call, we, we laugh when somebody says it's a chain and we go, well, yeah, there, there are three of them. I guess you could say they're a chain, but they're really so different from one another. They're, although their food's consistently great. And the omelets took two people to walk it in because it's so goddamn huge. And the breakfast burritos are the size of your head. They're really, Mm -hmm. they're good food. Yeah, that's the range. They're wonderful. We lost one of our, our local restaurants, which was kind of sad. There was a little, restaurant called the flying star cafe um they they had to retract they 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 claimed chapter 11 and pulled back a couple of restaurants and the bernalillo one was one that they closed so that's kind of sad because they had really good oatmeal and uh, salads but uh that's what 
what happens. They overstretch themselves and there's rumors that they mismanaged their money. So That's a shame. So what have you guys been up to this week? It's it, it was kind of a for me it was kind of a crazy week at work. Um not that it was a bad thing, it was just it it's how do I say it? It spiked. Got really busy in the middle of the week and it, it didn't really I mean I ended up it, to tell you how busy I was on Friday. I was sitting at my desk the whole day with earbuds in listening to music. Boom. I worked till at least seven or eight every night this week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Um, I managed to get uh, a first draft of Tales from the DMZ done this week. Um, That should be out uh, next week. I need to go over it one more time for for Oren. For Oren. Um, And uh, so that took up the the, the biggest chunk of my time. But uh, I also managed to play uh, Stowe. And uh, because it is a dilithium bonus weekend, I managed to accumulate 100,000 dilithium. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. I didn't even even try. Although I was in Stowe. Really what I'm doing is... um, (laughs) It's still grinding party horns. You're doing what? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, take out the end. No party horns. I, oh, you know the party horns that you get from the the Q event from the scanning the Omega particles. Okay. Um, uh, I'll I'll sign in once a day. Beth will do her uh, her mission so she can get the cumendations, but she'll always take the party horn and then she'll put it into the account bank and then I'll swap characters and then so each one of my characters will get a party horn. Without me having to grind 17 times. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So and some I, corrected me. Uh, it's it's a dilithium week. That's right. It doesn't end wow. on Thursday, right? Now, that's a box of chocolates I can get behind. So yeah. cute. It's, uh, like somebody Charlie. posted a picture of a, like a Valentine's Day box of chocolates, but the chocolates are actually a little Labrador treat. Charlie looked like that. Oh, Very cute. Thank you, son. Or thank you, uh, Matt. That was Matt. Right on. Yay. Um, what else did, 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 did anybody watch Agents or uh, Agent Carter? Oh, of course. <laughs> Holy crap. That was exciting. Love me some Helen Commandos. I'm, oh. She she kicked some butt. Wasn't it great? How many? Yeah, now, but then, then there's that ending. Yeah. Well, we know, we know that, um, I'm trying not to be spoilerish, but we know that her co-worker finally figures out that she's the blonde, right? Yeah. And uh, so we know that next week is going to be very critical of, uh, I have a feeling that her newfound friend is going to help her out. Because there's two episodes left, right? Uh, I think three. Um, maybe. Wait a minute. Her newfound friend. Are you talking the Black Widow? No, no, no. Talking about. I was going to say because she's the blonde, no friend. I'm, I'm talking about her, her blonde commander at SSR, the one who was a jackass through everything, and then finally admitted that he didn't deserve the Navy Cross. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I Wait, have a is, feeling he's going to be. Or, or the, the even the bigger boss. Yeah. Is is that the one that I think uh, is actually a Hydra agent? We yeah, both. He's not. Yeah, yeah, we're he's not. not. I'm, he's not, and I don't think his boss is either. I'm, I'm, I'm I don't not think sh- any of them are. Well, you know, I'm not sure yet because we know that S.H.I.E.L.D. gets infected early. I just don't know when that happens. If only it had worn a condom. I know, really, right? <laughs> if only S.H.I.E.L.D. had worn a condom, which now, is very funny considering its name. But I'm sh- Yes. Um, and uh, The Flash. Oh, yeah. That was the greatest karaoke scene ever. Uh, boy can sing. Barry can sing. Good. Do you think she was doing that on purpose? Oh, yeah. She was. Because <laughs> that was just absolutely... Wow. Now, did uh, um, fucking Arrow. Oh, God, I love that show. <laughs> Mike, have you seen it? Of course. Do I remember I it? Barely. Well, I love it. Um, <laughs> when she's talking to the cop, she says, of Arsenal, come over and get it. He's like, you guys are really scraping the bottom of the barrel for names, aren't you? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> the I remember police that captain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Terry, it's played by Paul Blackthorne, so you know it was said, like, totally awesome. <laughs> yeah. But this was a very Barrowman-heavy episode, with including Barrowman flashbacks. Which which one's Brandon Ruth on? He's on The Flash, right? Yes. Yeah. He's also supposed to be making an appearance in... Oh, no. Brandon Routh is on, he's on, uh, he's Arrow. on Arrow. Arrow. That's right. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. Isn't that the one he's in? He's he's also supposed to make a crossover appearance in the other one. Um, he is in, great in, in it. Flash. Too. I, yeah. he, he he really is fantastic in it. And now you know why I chose him as Bill. For God's sake. <laughs> 
just get Beth naked and be quiet. Yeah, well, she, That's a she... private conversation Terry and I had that I won't go into any further. <laughs> yes, we were talking about her character being naked. Naked. Beth was naked. Uh, I, I I finally wrote, I finally got to write a little bit of Beth this week because I was, um, I don't know, I don't know, kind of inspired, you know, I was just, something hit ah. me and I thought, it would, something hit me and I thought, I wonder what Beth would do in this situation, right? I was like, I wonder what, what would happen. And, that explains uh, the tweet. WWE. BD? <laughs> yeah, kind of what would Beth do? Yeah. And she, uh, and so I just kind of start. it's almost like one of those things where it's just an exercise to kind of work out a certain kind of character, um, you know, what would a, a character react to in, in certain situations. So I've written two identical um, intros, and then it kind of, it, it splits off from what happens when she beams down and this happens, but what happens when she beams down and, and us this, how, how would she react? And, um, uh, it's during the, the, essentially it was what would happen in Paris if, you know, she's beaming down because she's attending the, the inauguration. I have Tuvok becoming president. And, yeah. In, in, in my universe, Tuvok is, is he left the Titan to be, to go into the diplomacy Corps, and he worked his, how do I say, kind of worked his way through that and becoming president so an intelligence and agent in, 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 as president hmm. and hence the reason why when you get to when beth gets to paris the security she scan she goes through it's pretty intense it's pretty intense and uh, ah. nick was helping me through some of the military jargon and uh making sure that that particular security guards would speak in a, that it would be okay for them to speak in a lighthearted or certain tone. So Nick is awesome when it comes to stuff like that. So I can help. I'm awesome all the time, baby. Oh, it was awesome. And it was, it was just very, it was very fun. But the other, the, uh, the other point was how would somebody had asked me about, you know, in, in the very beginning of heritage, I have um, Riker and, and Troy doing like an eight week stint at Baku. And somebody said, yeah, but how would Beth take it if they did an eight month stint at Baku? And I thought, holy crap, what would you do if you found out that your parents were now like physically only about 20 years older than you were? Yeah. If, if Beth spent eight months, spent eight months there, she'd end up a toddler. She would, well, she would definitely end up <laughs> back in her, at, at, at the edge of her puberty. Yeah. That's that's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know. On the edge of Good 17. Good morning. I get blamed for everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the, the point different, the, the two different things come down. So she right oh, changed the formal uniforms for her. Thank God. I was, the first thing I did was I wrote out the fucking white uniform, made them black. Well, uh, something else I did this week, um, I introduced the, my nephew's. Um, Mason and Miles to Batman 1966. And Wait. oh my god. I thought they had, at one point, I thought they had died. Because? Because they were so into it. I mean, I'm going to put a, a, a picture in the chat room. Um, well, I'll put a link in the chat room to my, to my Facebook page that actually... <laughs> That shows you exactly how into it they were. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> were they just glued? Absolutely glued. They Love absolutely it. loved it. And which is which is amazing because usually when they're watching television, they're bouncing around or they're hopping off the walls or, you know, something. Right. But look at them. They're like totally laid back and just vegging. It was amazing. I've never they're seen They're doing them a little like something I like to call the date. <laughs> 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 oh, um, one more thing before we, we uh, move on. Yeah. Nick, congratulations on getting your that article posted over on uh, Trek News Network. Oh, thank you. It was a good article. And not just another pretty face. <laughs> it was, a, it good was a good article, wasn't it? I'm yeah. really interested. Have we gotten any? Have you, uh, is there even a comment section? There really isn't, is there? There is. Oh, there's a one. comment section. Is it fired up one. yet? Yeah, Mike's, Mike's the only commenter. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of a, a return you get on that because it's oh, an interesting this is conversation. On, this is something I got on Twitter yesterday. Now, I, I want you to tell me where this person would have got any inference of, of this from me. Don't have a problem with the core idea, but I 
need to know what will be done within the format. Tisn't enough to have a show with the words Trek and Star in the title. Has to be quality SF storytelling. Where right. in any of that did I come? Did I just say let's throw on a piece of shit? They didn't, but I think it was a probably just. I don't think that was a comment on your article as much as it was just a comment from that person. Well, saying, and, the, yeah. and then later on they say. Uh, Apart from everything else, we have to agree on what's a good story. And my response to that was, no, we don't, because what you may love, I may hate. I'm just looking for consistency. Well, that was the beauty of Star Trek anyways, because there was always some real turd episodes, and there was always some great ones, and what kind was which. I wouldn't consider either Clone Wars or Rebels to be Star Trek quality writing, (gasps) for example. Oh my god. I Personally, I would take Rebels writing every day of the week. I said it beats anything Voyager put up. No shit. Well... (laughs) But still, it's good. I like where Rebels went. I really like Rebels. I really do. I think it's fun. I think it's, uh, like I said, they don't talk down. Well, then it took a turn, Terry. Okay. Because I said, uh, you know, Clone Wars and Rebels is also reaching to youth, something Trek also needs to do. Mm -hmm. That's the point. It doesn't have to. It could go to a more profitable and high-end demographic. Then I realized, ah, we're talking to one of the elitists. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, 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 it's like, no, we have to keep it to ourselves. We have to protect it. We have to keep it from being de Well, I know. Then people, people feel. Uh, I was, I was very proud of myself. Instead of getting, getting, icky. you know, icky, I said, Star Trek is entertainment. Needs ratings. Nowhere is it written a broad demo equals lowest denominator. Um, yeah, he said, I thoroughly he, agree with that. He says pitching to the overcrowded youth market is how we ended up with the ghastliness of Star Trek 09 and Into Darkness. Well, no, we ended up with that because... They just weren't as memorable. I'll, I'll, I have to say that. They weren't as memorable because they were kind of written to be kind of throwaway. I mean, well, let's they face were, it, they, they were they written were. for the overseas market as well. Well, that's true. And then he says, of course it will be the lowest common denominator. That's the market share everyone calls for. And because... Not- it's owned by a public company, people. The saying, you can't do anything unless the shareholders say, make us money. Well, and then here's, here's what I think was the core of his argument. You upgrade for an adult market, starved of good entertainment, or downgrade to compete for kids. What's wrong with kids? Uh-huh. They, yeah. they're, they're, I, with, with, without fresh blood, the franchise is dead in and 20 exactly. years. Exactly. And then totally uh, a fucking somebody that doesn't understand the business. Star Trek still aims, to, still has a good adult demo. Aim there. It makes money. Aim at kids will lose. Baloney. And here is why. You aim at kids, you've already got the adult built in. Why? Well, according because to- the kids are going to have those toys and merchandising like you were talking about mm-hmm. purchased by the older adult. So you're getting that money one way or another. As a matter of fact, you're probably going to make more because kids destroy their toys. Yep. Yeah. Buy two. So, one so for mom, one, one for one thing <laughs> one for that kid. we learned very, very well from George Lucas and Disney and the other merchandising geniuses is you've got to aim for the, the, the younger market. And why? Because the adults are going to buy that shit anyway. If they don't have kids, they're still going to buy it. Yeah. It, but if it, they it, have kids, they might buy two. But this this whole... One to keep in the package and one to rip open. I'm telling yep. you, that's how well, it works. This one whole, for little Johnny and one for mom. Yes. <laughs> this whole thing that they're doing of... that, the, Like this person's... At, I, I I am I'm it, it, it's stunning to me. Oh fuck kids. Um yeah. no that's no. kind of that's How kinda... what, how old were you when you first when you first saw your first Star Trek episode and went oh. Oh. I was yeah. four. Yeah. yeah. Four. Four or five. Yeah. It wasn't like Star Trek was geared to the adults on the on the on the on the reruns. You know, and Matthew Anderson. We were we were kids and teenagers and it came on during Saturday just after yep. Saturday morning cartoons. Yep. That Matthew was geared Anderson for kids. makes a great point. I was in junior high when Star Trek Two came out. Right. Are you are you telling me that Star Trek Two didn't appeal to kids as well? Right. But it did. It was also it just didn't something talk down for to the them. Inti- exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. And somehow this guy thinks writing for kids automatically means talking down to them, which isn't true. I, I no. And talking down to kids is in in entertainment. Do- it just it bothers. 
boggles the mind. However, some of the smartest television out there happens to be television that is made for kids. Oh my God, Adventure Kids, Time. Kids are, are brilliant. They're, they're, they're smart, smarter than many adults that I know. But that's because they are, you know, they're sponges. They absorb everything. If you expose them to crap, their minds are going to be filled with it. Well, if you expose them to good quality television with, with great story, they're going to moral, love and, it. And, and questionable moral tales to let them figure it out, to let them realize, oh, okay, not everything is, is black and white and what uh, ifs and what around. That's, I was that's playing that's Minecraft stuff. at the same time that I was debating this person. Yeah. So I, I was like, you know, and it was also like two in the morning. So I was <laughs> splitting my time. But, I, you know, if I had thought about it, this would have been my argument. Yes, because the following are all dumbed down, idiotic uh, shows and or movies. Toy Story, Toy Story 2. Toy Story 3. Finding almost Nemo. anything almost anything put out by Pixar, Pixar Disney. That's true. Exa- exactly. Right. No, I, I, I you know you anybody, know I agree. Anyone to tell me of a more heroic scene than that scene in Toy Story 3 when they're heading for the fire. Oh my god, wasn't that great? Fucking phenomenal. It was great. And, and see this guy is the pro and we talked remember we talked about this with Mark Cushman. Mm-hmm. It, it's that we have to be smarter than everybody else because of Star Trek. No, you're entertaining. You know, somewhere. <sighs> <laughs> When did now, that happen? I mean, I know I've been guilty of it myself, so I can't throw that rock too hard. See, um, now, I, now, now, now I've had my, my muffin, so I'm all fired up. Somewhere sugar levels, along right? the line, people stopped, and I'm using people as a generic, you know what I mean, Yes. Ex- remembering that Star Trek is entertainment, and they started taking it as, uh, you know, the this, 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 this sermon from the Temple Mount. It, <laughs> oh, people, my. It's a TV show. It's movies. Let's never lose sight of that. Right. And for some reason, I, I, I'm i hard-pressed to think of some other shows where people act that way. Like, hmm. where it's like, the, it, well, even Dalton if, if, Abbey fans don't act like that. Well, yeah. They, they're a whole different kind of. Yeah, they're a whole different kind of. Cray, cray. Yeah, they are a whole different kind of cray, cray. In a happy way. I mean, we all have, each fandom oh, yeah. has its own unique insanity but, but this That's, whole star trek has to be at a higher no star trek has to be at a level that gets ratings and sells that's what it has to be at and if you're able to achieve the ethical dilemma and the um uh, uh points on on humanity that you can while you're at it all the better but right. not every single episode of star trek was like that some of it was just to have fun with some of it was just to be um silly some of it was just to be dramatic for dramatic for um, no, not for dramatic. For, for every drama in the sake. pale moonlight, there's yeah. a magnificent. Fr- no, I mean, there's a, a prophet in lace. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I can, you. I can, I can say that I don't talk down to, to my nephews and and to my niece. Right. I I I treat them. I don't want to say as a, as adults because they're not. But I talk to them as people. I treat them as people, as I would respect others, and they they appreciate that. You know. They're, I'm their favorite uncle for, for, for a reason, and it's because I respect them as much as they respect me. And, you know, it's... Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm... just so... Fr- because this guy is the kind of reason that there's, one, roadblocks... Two, that networks, network executives, you know, peruse comments or uh, on on message boards or whatever. And they have people that do that. Let's don't think that they don't. And they see that. And why would they want to spend the time to such a, 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 an ass in, in a vocal – how do I say – an audience where vocal people like that who say, oh, forget the children. Watch The Brave and the Bold, Batman the Brave and the Bold. It's a kid's cartoon. That's also very, very much for adults. I, I'm with you. I, that's why I say there's a lot of there's a lot of television that is actually what quote unquote geared to the kids. That is absolutely very um, also appeals to the adult nature. I, think I the- find and and to be honest with you, I really think that Rebels it does that. If if Rebels d- deals with some really adult themes, and not the least of which death and um, destiny are are two of them. <clears throat> and that's not typical kid fare. And that's why I actually appreciate the fact that Star Wars is able to do that with mm-hmm. Rebels. The, yeah, it's a it's a younger character. 
character, but Luke was a young character too. That's he why he was so Tosh appealing Station. to people. <laughs> yeah, he was a whiner. <laughs> but look at what he does grow up, right? Right. Yeah. And it's like the same thing with Harry Potter films. He start off young, and he, by the time he gets to the end of it, he's not just a man, but he's a exceptional man. He's you know, and he's been pretty much fucked over through seven whole films and books. Now the the thing that I thought people would react to, which everybody everybody's reacted to the animation part. I really thought that there would be more of a reaction to the anthology or quasi anthology over a, a serialized, serialized, serialized. Actually, I appreciated that the most because it it provides almost like a test bed to see what stories people respond to. And like you had mentioned, you can spin off the ones that really work. What I, I thought actually it was think would be a great fun deal is if you're going to be doing an anthology where you're going to be maybe if you could do say like you said a, a three episode arc or a four episode arc of Titan and then different world different universe or even or same universe but a different time period say go into Excelsior and and do like a two or three episode arc there why not why not change up the animation style yeah true I mean, yeah no problem at all when I mean. I, I, the reason why we're going with an animated everybody is is because we believe that it would be in the long run cheaper. Um, and if people also, don't know, Mike, do you do you have the link? Because we have people yeah, here he that might not know. I what did. I, okay. I and, did Nick wrote this sure great that. article where he he felt that one of the ideas that should not be poo-pooed is an anthology or an animated anthology series for the next Star Trek um, if you're going to do an a, If you're going to do an anthology, it it really has to, has be, to be animated. animated. You cannot I mass. do it. You can't do it any other way. It would get too expensive. Exactly. I mean, how many ships would you have to build for a season? Exactly. You and know, right. It's like just said, insane. From, it has to be animated. Like I said, you could go from uh, a Star Trek CSI type episode to an all Klingon episode, you know? Well, it's what we had talked about before, where, or why not go one universe, one period of time where you follow the ship, i.e., this is this generation's enterprise. But instead of having to focus everything on the enterprise, you can say, okay, well, the enterprise this week will have a three story arc with the enterprise. And as it reaches, oh, say, Starbase 313, stop there. Uh, do a three episode story arc of people at 313 and then you can go off and oh now they're off to Starfleet Med and they can do like a CS or a, 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 a medical ER. episode or a medical arc and then do a um, a three episode oh say Dr. like you House. said like a CSI or a murder arc where you know there's some kind of an intrigue mm-hmm. and why not even get into the West Wing side of it like you said and get to Starfleet um, you know get to Paris talk about the delve into the the, the wider aspects of it is it going to be and to do the to do anything like that in a live action would just be cost prohibitive to the nth degree and, and thank you Grim Grimmy's here thank you Grim and that was also a, a thing that I thought was a major God, selling no point kidding, was that we could have Captain Sulu on the Excelsior because George's voice is fine right yeah and Everybody's the other thing is, is fine. to have, say, let's just say have Shatner come in because there's a Kirk, a, a Kirk episode. Right. Uh, to have him come in for one day and do stew lines compared to a week of filming for what would be the same, you know, half hour, hour, however long. And what's the great is, is you could totally do them. It wouldn't have to be, it would be far easier to do new stuff in a flashback format, right? Exa- so even yeah, if exactly. you had something in the, for- in the set in the prime universe at the, at, after you know, after um, Nemesis, then or and Voyager, then it's absolutely possible to 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 use on a frequent basis some of the historical characters from the previous shows. And you're still yeah. gonna save money by having them in for one or two days, as opposed to shooting for a week. They're gonna come in. They're gonna. Most of these actors are are, are pros at voiceover at this point. As a lot well. of them have their own studio, so they don't even have to Frakes. leave the house. Yeah, yeah. And Jonathan Frakes, good God, you know, with his voiceover work. Yeah, and well, everybody from TNG with all of the gargoyles work they had done yeah. for so long. Um. So yeah, I would love. You know me. I would love that. I would. I, uh, I would and truly, it, truly love that, and it and would just get it would just get Star Trek back on the air. It would be yeah, awesome. and it doesn't even have to be limited to the Prime Universe. I mean, nope. we could have mirror universe episodes, alternate universe episodes. 
I mean, Star Trek is a multiverse. Oh, can you imagine animation done in the style of Sean Tarango's? Wouldn't that be fun? Like a real comic book style? Yeah. That would be a blast. That would be a real blast. I would love to see something like that. Um, one of the, uh, uh, the kind of a kind of a squirrel is uh, another one of our favorite between Alan and I. One of our favorite um, video games, which is The Legend of Zelda. Uh, <laughs> some news came out about that this week. That uh, oh ne- yeah, that net- Netflix is um, oddly enough planning a live action Zelda show. Which Zelda! I thought of all of the things I really would have assumed. Sorry. Would have been a all of the things that I would have assumed would have been a an animated show. They're not. They're going live action, and they're it, the comparisons I've heard it is that they kind of want to make it a Game of Thrones, but aimed more for the, the younger generation. Well, they've already done. Uh, well, years ago, I remember it from when I was growing up. But they've already done a Zelda animated series. And it was shit, wasn't it? Eh, it wasn't great, but yeah. I watched it. <laughs> because what did they do? They talked down to the kids. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it ended up being completely forgettable. The shows that don't talk down to the kids and allow the kids to actually uh, use their brains a little bit are the shows that tend to stick around a lot longer. Space Ghost. I mean, one of the things that you had, oh, we had God, mentioned, yeah, that we had mentioned Toy Story earlier. One of the things that made Toy Story work so well for a wide range of uh, of audiences was it was it may have been geared towards children but some of its humor some of some some of its themes were really geared towards adults i mean that's that's i think if you're going to create something that's how you do it you may you may gear it towards children but if you sprinkle adult issues or adult uh humor into it it makes it more appealing to everyone so and then when the kids watch it again, you know, five years later, it's like, oh, I never noticed that before. It, ge- it creates this rewatchability. Is that even a word? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but we'll use it. All righty then. Well, and uh, oh, look. Thank you, Matthew. That's such great news. Uh, congratulations to Massively Overpowered. This is kind of a crazy week for Massively. They, uh, got... They got they got canned. They all AOL cut the cords at massively.com. And um, so the group has decided or decided to start a Kickstarter. And trust me when I say none of us really thought that the back that, you know, they were actually really worried that they would get the backing. They wanted a fifty thousand dollar goal in order just to keep the site as it was kind of going or were the people who currently write for, for massively going. And uh, they reached their goal just a few minutes ago. With 26 days left in their Kickstarter, so they do have stretch goals, and uh, keep supporting them because I'm telling you, the stretch goals would be very. <laughs> and since we're talking Kickstarters, yes, uh, Star Trek continues. Yes, where are they at, by the way? I'm pulling them up right now. Yeah, I am too. Uh, 139,812 dollars pledged, so they've already reached their initial goal. Great, Nick. I was going to say that um, our, our our good friend there, Grimmy. Uh, posted yesterday that he won't be making it to to Vegas again this year. I think we need a Kurt starter. <laughs> I think you're right. Grimmy! Well, uh, Star Trek continues. They still have eight days to go. Uh, as I said, they're at 139000 um, For the engineering set, they need one hundred and fifty. Uh, then there's the planet set for one hundred seventy-five, And then the third episode would, would finally come into play at 225000 So it looks like they're, they're going to definitely... They should be able to hit the engineering set. I don't know about the planet set, but um, one of the things I would love to see more and Star Trek continues is more more planets. You know, get right. us off the ship for a bit. I want to yep. see more Lieutenant Smith. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you both missed the Or joke. is it Jones? Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Very well. Jones, done. sir. That's great. Right on. Um so, yeah, um, so if you haven't read Nick's um article over at Trek News Network, please do so. Uh comment, give us your ideas. We kind of we're we're curious as to what what you might think would work in an anthology and or animated series or point of view. So you can uh, leave a comment over at Nick's article at Trek News Network or you can email us or tweet us. You can email us at hosts at gntshow.com or email us at symbol Sunday G and T. That's A-N-D. Well, um, I, I, I have to tell you, I laugh because I called Terry yesterday and said, hey, I, I'm writing something and I want you to take a look at it before I send it out. And there was actual shock 
shock in her voice that I was actually writing something. It was nice. I was very pleased to hear that you were writing again, especially because I happen to have been sitting in front of my own computer writing Beth, which I haven't really done in two years. So it <laughs> That's, Wow. I all know, three of us were weird, writing then at the same time. Yeah. Well, it was uh, this, this, it all gelled. It, it, I, Thursday morning, I was deadbeat because Wednesday I had the community meeting that lasted till uh, anyway. And uh, so Thursday morning I was beat and I, I'm in the shower. You know, you're just kind of standing there letting the water roll over you. <laughs> and the, it all gelled in like 30 seconds and I got to tell you the piece I wrote in the shower in my head kicked ass over this piece <laughs> isn't you know, that usually the case though I know it? yeah but it was it was one of those and I, you know then Thursday at work and then Friday with work and we had the best warrior which is uh, soldier of the year competition all week which is one of the reasons I was working so late um, I think you saw the picture that I put on my Facebook that I took from from out there of the medics doing the triage and yesterday, it was just like, I went to the comic book store, chilled out, you know, got some comics, went to the diner, did some reading, and then got home and thought, let me put this down. Let me see if I can't knock it out in an hour, I, I won't even try. But, you know, we, we, we the, the people from Trek News Network were so kind to ask us if we wanted to be contributors. Right. And so I, you know, I thought, well, this is a great thing because they, they want to get traffic. And Terry, did you like my answer to Oren about the one thing? on your yeah. thread yeah <laughs> i was being brutally honest yeah um but um I, and then i called terry because i get that made me give myself a deadline to hey she'll be waiting for this so let me get it done and uh I, it, you know came together i right on it's great it was really well done and i'm 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 pleased that uh, that we're able to to have such a nice relationship with Trek News Network. They've been so kind to us. So oh, they really have. For those that don't realize, like yesterday, I was having a technical problem, and boy, how fast were they on it? I know. They're right on. They're- I wrote up. Uh, I wrote up a, an article for them. It should be coming out soon as well. I know, Mike. You were so sweet. He was like, "Don't post it yet. Let Nick's article get some traction." Yeah, I, I, I figured it, it, it deserved the attention, and I I'm didn't want it to detract that from that. I'm hoping that and and Dave and Kevin and those guys and Keith all read it and maybe weigh in on it. That Scott saw it. I saw his post on. Oh, uh, Scott pimped the Pearson? hell out of it. Yeah, yeah. he pimped the Ooh, hell out of it. He ripped the hell out of it. Pimped. pimped. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, one of the questions I was going to ask real quick was, um, and it just flew out of my head, oh, is um, the fact that we also have a wonderful um, article on our site at the Fan Dance. Uh, Dom Burrito posted a an article, an opinion op-ed about the uh, fifth anniversary of Star Trek Online. So please do yourself a favor. Go back to it. You know, not now. Don't leave the chat page. And you, you can right-click and open up a new tab and uh, give Dom Burrito's the link. Uh, article a read over. It was a wonderful article. I think it's kind of funny that, of course, the moment that he posts anything that has anything positive to say about Cryptic Studios or even the game, people are like, oh, you're... You know, you're you're oh, just in bed with them. Sucking? Yeah, whose cock are you sucking? And who are you doing? And I'm thinking, yeah, well, welcome to my world, Don. Sorry, I should have warned you about that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, just because you say that's something... the evolved fandom that guy was talking about. <laughs> Where were your involved sensibilities then? Um, Good quote. Good quote. <laughs> And it's just, it, it's kind of disheartening. And at the same time, it, it's actually quite funny because it even if you provide constructive criticism, which is the only useful criticism there is, to go out and just kind of go, rah, I hate this, but not provide any kind of a solution that will make you happy is useless criticism. If if there is a if there if there is a reasonable, achievable solution to a problem that you have, you you are expected to offer it. That's all there is to it. In my life, if it's called constructive criticism. If you have constructive criticism and you offer constructive criticism, people don't want it. They just want to hear your hate. They just want to hear your hate log and whatnot. And it's like, no, because cryptic just sucks, man, and they're just taking your money, man, and it's just the man, man, right? 
It's so silly. It's so silly. And I feel sorry for Don, and I'm happy for, and at the same time, I'm happy for Don because apparently people read it, and um, so yay. I, I'm yeah. not sorry for Don on one for one reason <laughs> because his name always makes me hungry. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Except for me, I had my burrito yesterday. I'm still full. Oh. <laughs> Every time, it's like, God damn it! Now I now I want a burrito. Not you, Don, because that would be you're no John Barrowman. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get into a little bit of Star Trek news. Star Trek Movie News. This week, uh, we got some very intriguing news about Star Trek Three. Even though J.J. Abrams denies that that's what it's called. He was quoted, by the way, this week, uh, Star Trek. J.J. Abrams was quoted to say that it will not be called Star Trek Three Because remember, he's still a producer in this now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that he's very happy with Simon Pegg and that Simon Pegg is currently working on the story. Dude, it's it's like fucking May 8th or February 8th. We well, start filming in four fucking weeks. In, in J.J., weeks. We may, people may have their problems with J.J., but he's not stupid. Calling it Star Trek Three would, yeah. They, they, they haven't called any of them Thank you. The, Star Trek 2, you know, right. or Star Trek the motion picture. So why would right. people assume that it would be called Star Trek 3? He's not right. an idiot. No. We no. may not like some of the things he and, does, and but it, he's a bright man. And it was a very uh, light quote. It wasn't heavy. You know what I mean? It was just, it didn't contain a lot of information. He was actually there for Star Wars at the function for Star Wars as opposed to anything related to Star Trek. So I'm sure that. Well, I can understand question, that. But either way, the link is in the chat room on that one. Yes. Um, I mean, if all of his, if all of his energy is not devoted to Star Wars right now, then he's doing that film a disservice. That is true. Yeah. Star News. The Perth Mint in Australia has or will be offering two silver coins commemorating Star Trek, the original series. By I think the way, could- Perth Mints are really good if a woman's... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, so silly. Um, this is why people those are kind of cool, By the way, I did get a private comment that asked if I really wrote that. Because for some reason, <laughs> with my role on the show, you know, that I'm the smart ass. Yeah. Oh, so you people cannot don't... be articulate? So you can't actually exactly. be smart and exactly. articulate and know yeah. how to write, even though you are a journalist, a journalist. by trade? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Douchebag. <laughs> oh, no, too funny. But the coins that are being minted by the Perth Mint in Australia are actually quite beautiful. Yeah, I like that. I really that. want the one of the ship. Wait, there's more than what? There's one of <gasps> Oh, my God. Isn't that Wow. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Very They're doing cool. two different coins, both at one ounce silver proofs. Uh, one has got uh, Kirk doing his, his little smarmy in old pose. And uh, the other one is of the uh, Enterprise, which I think is Very cool. quite beautiful. I think they're nice. And they come with transporter-themed packaging. I mean, that's I an awful lot of packaging for a coin, but that is awesome. I want them. <laughs> well, the wow. packaging is why it's almost $200. <laughs> Oh, true. Wow. Yeah. But that's quite, quite beautiful. Oh, well, that's for the two coin set. So it's right. 90 for the one. It looks more like a holodeck than a transporter. Yeah. The door. But yeah. Wow. It's that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I liked it too. Uh, what else is going on? Oops, I just closed a uh, bu- 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 book news. We received a wonderful email last week. I didn't get a chance to talk about this, but one of the things that we do like to do here at at G&T Show is also to remind people that there are other outlets. We also, we talk about the unofficial films all the time, like Axanar and Farragut and Continues. But the one thing that we really want to remind people is that we're also big supporters of unofficial fan fiction or unofficial fiction. And there's a lot of great talent out there, people who are writing books and stories 
stories of uh, affiliated Star Trek universes that you'll never be able to see anywhere else just because they'll they'll never get they'll never get published. They are these are people who work just as hard, have just as much talent and and create some really unique and wonderful characters. One of those groups is somebody that is a is a group that I've supported for a long time called United Trek. United Trek is headed up by a guy by the name of Michael Garcia and United Trek I don't think they have their own site anymore they used to um, but they have a contiguous universe with multiple writers but each writer focuses on a different crew or a different ship or a different star base it's but it is all one contiguous universe so it's possible for them if they wish to to have crossovers amongst their characters um, just as you would any other kind of greater universe or show that that universe at United Trek happens to be one of my favorites uh, fan fiction series of all times and uh, we received an update so I'm going to be putting some links into the chat room but uh, Mike sent us an email and he said hi Tara Lynn um, DJ is coming close to posting the last parts of his Star Eagle adventure Semper Fidelis this is playing quote unquote at Ad Astra right now Ad Astra is this wonderful if you haven't heard of it yet is a fantastic Star Trek focused fan fiction archive. It's not like fanfiction.net where you kind of have to weed through um, the multitude of, of fandoms to find something Star Trek. This is all just Star Trek. So if you're a fan fiction writer and you want great feedback on your work, getting beta readers to do your stuff, or to, to read your stuff, and to help you become a better writer at Astra, um, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. It's really wonderful. Um, right on. And so there's uh, CJ's Semper Fidelis. And the second one, he said, Sam Redfeather. Now, um, you know, I get what? Uh, that first link that you you shared, um, yeah. I can't get it to open. Oh. So that might be a dead link. Um, just be aware. I, I found out about something, Terry, and I want to hear your opinion or your outright dis- dis- derisive laughter when I tell you about it. Let me see if I can copy. I don't know why it's not working. Uh, they may have changed a it's bit up- of, of the link because I'm not... Because it popped up. I'm, I'm copying it directly from... Yeah. Even when I click the, the email link itself, it takes me to a dead, dead page. And it's you because I'm at Ad Astra and I'm copying it from Ad Astra. Really? Hmm. Weird. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, I'll go so ahead and the, include the link. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Um, it is also the second one. Oh, site, the site's current. Oh, oh, Ad Astra is down for maintenance. I just happen to have it sitting up, Mike. That's what it is. Okay. Just the, said, the site's currently down for maintenance, but the links are fine. Mike is working on the site. I'll, we'll still continue okay. to, to provide the links, especially in the in the uh, show notes. So the uh, the second one, I want to save the, the last one for me. But Darkush is also working on his take on the four years war with quote the hit or with the uh, the hidden dagger over at Trek BBS. Um, does not post to Ad Astra, but he does post at Trek BBS, where they also have a fantastic uh, fan fiction. A section of their forums. So you can head over there and read Darkush's stuff. It, and finally, my I have to say, this is my favorite. I, I, am, I am biased. I am biased because Sam Redfeather writes a character that I fell in love with several years ago. And Sam Redfeather's shit just gets me all hot. Love it. Uh, Sam Redfeather writes Star Trek uh, Force Vanguard or a series called Gibraltar. It follows the USS Gibraltar and the unique characters that are in there, including probably the most amazing El Orion character I have ever read by the by the name of Paula. He's fucking awesome. And uh, he's kind of like a great, you know, kind of a Daxi character. A, a, he's had a, because he's El Orion, he's lived for centuries. And so therefore he gets to delve into a lot of um, his background of what he did before there, before there was a Federation, before he, before the destruction of Eloria, before the Borg took over. And it's just, just a fantastic fucking character. And, um, so give Sam's the Gibraltar stuff a, a go over. I command you because it's that good. Um, so yeah, hey, Terry, Mike, I did that. Yes, sir. You were talking about fan fiction. You want to hear the ultimate in irony? What? There's a 50 shades of gray fan fiction site, but it's 50 shades of gray was fan fiction. I know. <laughs> the, now you're talking of you know, this is almost like a That's meta. It's meta, yeah. But <laughs> if I went back in time and met my mom, I would be my own grandfather and I would be No 
Uh, so there was one more e- uh, link in that email. Um, Mike oh, Garcia and AJ are, they offered a uh, sneak peek at their task force Vanguard. Yes. Which please put, put that in there. The reason why I didn't include that link was because it's the one that made all the noise. It's got music. Attached, oh. So be careful when you open it. It's got loud, wonderful music. So it's a teaser. It's almost like a teaser trailer. Yeah, it is a teaser page. So yeah, cool. Um, papa. I have a news article I'd like to Please. talk about real quick. Uh, I think Nick shared it on, uh, on our private uh, uh, staff which, page. Is it? Is it the one I have? Think up next. Oh, the IO nine. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But go ahead and put it in. Let's talk about that because I'm okay. It's I'm in the chat room. So you want to start us off, and then I'll get to my uh, complaints about the article. <laughs> well, we kind of didn't we kind of talk on well, we were going to touch on this last week because the article came out. I didn't see it till yet. What was it yesterday, Mike? I think it Friday? was. I think the it was day Friday. Before, yeah. Friday sounds about right. But either way, really, what it is is a, is a huge advertisement for Volume Three of These Are the Voyages by Mark Cushman. Mm-hmm. Really, that's what it was. But I'm I'm interested to hear what you have to say about what was wrong with the article. Well, <laughs> um, I, I have now. I have. I, I'm progressing through the book. I'm not finished with it yet. So right. there's still things that you know. Um, but one of the big issues that I have with it, uh, with the article, was the role that they the, how 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 he's actually portraying Gene Roddenberry in in in, in this article. Um, Gene Roddenberry had. Uh, he, he he had fought you know for Star Trek initially, and uh, he even put his foot down and said you know um, he he had put his he had promised the the network that if they 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 if they if they would give him something and I forget exactly what it was that he would step step down, and they called his bluff you know or if they didn't do something that he would he he would walk away. They didn't call they they didn't call his bluff and he was forced out. It was wasn't really his choice and the way that the article spins it he's the one that didn't want to be involved and yet throughout the first 16 episodes you see him in there helping trying to shape but at the same time he's got bills to pay he needs he needs work so he has two films he needs to write yet he's still trying to participate in 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 star trek as best as he's able to sneak around with and then later on there's another uh he actually quotes a scene where uh, Roddenberry, or uh, he says that it was Mike Milk Mickless, but I, in, I believe it was actually. Um, um, I know uh, you're saying he. Are you talking about Charlie, who wrote the IO9 article? Because that's a woman. Oh, my mistake. She. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it, her name is Charlie. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, uh, she, let's see the the sound the sound engineer. I can't remember his name for the life of me at the moment. But uh, the the story was recounted by the sound engineer Doug. Doug is his first name. Um, Grindstaff. Uh, and yet she credits she <laughs> she credits it to, to Miklas and, and points out the scene or the, the, the quoted material about uh, Nichelle Nichols and Gene Roddenberry's affair. I just thought ha- drawing attention to that and then the way that he that she talks about Roddenberry initially, it just seemed way out of out of line. You know, so, um, yeah, it just seemed it, NBC was doing everything they can. In, in my opinion, it was NBC that was really at the root cause of every, all the troubles that Star Trek had. And, you know, it just seemed like the article was slanted to show Roddenberry in the most negative light possible. And that is not how it's portrayed in, in, in book three. In the book. Right. So that's my complaint. There it's a go. good article, though, nonetheless. <laughs> And I'm sorry I got her the gender No, 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 swap. no. I mean, it, like I said, her name's Charlie. It was an assumption. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, the it, it it is nice to see though that uh, they recommend the book, and I think everybody does the book three. You can now order from uh, through through Amazon from uh, yep. Jacobs Brown Press, and uh, go ahead and pick it up. And I know that uh, Mr. Cushman, we do, and listen, listen God. to our supplemental log with Mr. Cushman from a couple weeks ago. It was great. You know, Matthew Anderson's putting up pictures of uh, of old Star Trek episodes. Isn't it great that Vin Diesel has had such a long career? <laughs> 
<laughs> Pretty funny. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about my mini rant there. No, it's okay. It's okay. Now, now one of the big things that came out this week was a uh, rumor about the next movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, and it is a rumor. It's a rumor. Okay, folks? Nothing has been set in stone yet. It, but, but, but there is a very persistent rumor that uh, Brian Cranston is being eyed or has been cast as the villain in the next movie. I heard it was just they're, they're in talks, but the character is kind of sort of Cranston-like. Which I'm okay with. I'm okay. Oh. So he's a dentist that puts that people under and then swaps with his... Uh, Ew. That had me scream. Terry, you don't watch Seinfeld. That was one of his roles. Ew. He was a dentist that did that. Ew. I love Cranston. And I think he would make a wonderful villain. And he, because he's done both television and film, even if they don't kill him off, he can cross over if they decide to do a, a television series in, in the alternate universe. I'm just saying. He has that – there's that potential behind his, his ability. I don't disagree. There's a uh, uh, an interesting thing too. What kind? And I'm kind of pissed because I, I I deleted the article by accident, but it just came out too. Tim so Watley. Wasn't... That was the dentist's name, Tim Watley. Sorry, I was I was racking my brains trying to remember. Didn't even <laughs> Google that. Had to just was concentrating on the Seinfeld names. Tim Watley. The um, there's also some news about you know there's you know the new uh, spinoff from Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. Oh yeah. Um, Better Call Saul features Michael McKee. Um, who everybody would probably remember out on a Star Trek sign as being the clown, the fear clown from Voyager's episode called The Thaw. Uh, he's also been in Spinal Tap and Laverne and Shirley. You know, if you guys don't know who Hello. Michael McKean is, yeah. If you don't remember who he is, then, then stomp on you. Either way, Michael McKean's going to be in Better Call Saul. He's going to play Saul's older brother. And I'm hearing some really amazing things about Better Call Saul. I was really worried about this this uh, the series. I was really worried that it wouldn't. The reason why it's so important to us is because a, a, a big chunk of the show is filmed here in New Mexico, not unlike uh, Breaking Bad, and we could use all the film work that we can get here. So um, to, to to hear critical reviews that are coming back positive already is is nice to hear. So um, I'm very hopeful for Better Call Saul, and I'm hoping that it stays as long and is just as successful as, as Breaking Bad was. However, one of the things that was kind of interesting in the article at StarTrek.com that features an interview with Michael McKeon uh, about Better Call Saul is also the fact that, uh, without even me realizing it, that Bob Odenkirk is involved in Better Call Saul. I, di- I didn't even, I did not even realize that. So there's another Star Trek connection. Yay. Right on. New Star Trek products are coming in soon. When it first got released, did everybody see the messenger bag that came out that had the Enterprise on it? I believe so. Okay, and it sold out like crazy fast. It's available. Did again, not, everybody. Didn't know it, that, but yeah, awesome. Yeah, it, it sold out crazy fast. The good news is it's available again. So if you want to order your TOS Enterprise messenger bag, do it now before it sells out again. Uh-uh. Snazzy. And um, I love how the, the clasps look, look like nacelles. Yeah, and the... Uh, now, Nick, if Nick and I were talking this week, uh, in the bigger, wider, more important world of um, national or international politics and uh, news, everybody probably already heard <laughs> about <laughs> King Abdullah of Jordan kind of rightfully getting personally pissed off about the horrific murder of one of his pilots by ISIS. And For those response. that I was <laughs> not laughing, I, that's not where I thought Terry was going. No. I thought she was going somewhere else, and she knows what I thought she was going to. Yeah, I do. No. I'm sorry. The, his no, laugh yeah. about what he was thinking of was appropriate. I'm just saying. But um, King Abdullah, that fucking stud. He's just a fucking stud. <laughs> with a Star Trek he, connection. With a total Star Trek. This is why I'm bringing it up. And what I think is utterly adorable is the fact that most news outlets have been posting that connection within the context of their of their headlines for this. King I know. Abdullah, weird. A King, I know, it's so weird. King Abdullah is going out and is actually getting in his own fucking plane and doing his own fucking sorties against ISIS, right? This is one badass motherfucking king. He's pissed. I'm going to go in and I'm going to do an independence day and I'm going to go shoot him myself. 
Huh? And he's quoting Clint Eastwood from Unforgiven. <laughs> I'm going to so kill funny. you. I'm going to kill your dog. <laughs> Well, he's also a huge Star Trek fan. And if you didn't know that, then now you do, because he was actually in an episode of Voyager. And he's the one that built the theme park. Yes, there is a theme park that involves Star Trek in Jordan. And now all of a sudden, I kind of want to go. I kind of want to go. Well, either way, I thought it was cute. The Time Magazine article, right? The king who had a role in Star Trek is now going to war for real. That was the headline. And what's so funny is he didn't even have a line. He was in the background of a shot. He was totally in the background. It was an unpaid line. Well, because Back when he was a he prince. Would, because he wasn't a, he wasn't a member of SAG. You don't he, get a line unless you're your union, dude. And he was one of those guys that, you know, was just a fan and he asked for a tour and they put him in a in a scene, you know? That's awesome. Quick, we need an extra. Put on this uniform. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. But, it's pretty you know, damn I awesome. think it, in other news that happened this week, um, from what I understand is that Brian Williams is having uh, issues because <laughs> he was on one of the ships at Wolf 359. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> That's going to be a meme that will never, he'll never shed. And I'm okay with that. Oh, whatever. Um, that's that's and that's all I'm gonna say on it because yeah. Terry, you know exactly how I feel. Yeah, we both. Yeah, but, and that's really not for this podcast. No, that's for especially a whole considering Third Infantry show. Division is my unit. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we you know what? News. That's kind of. Did that. you see Star who joined Trek us in the chat room, Terry? I did not. However, who are we talking? About? Good morning, Mr. Dayton. I was gonna say, and it just happens to be that time. Do we not have one? Yes, we I, do have an ass Dayton. Where? I never got it, Mike. Here. I'll I'll put the link in the chat room because it is live on our site already. And you there you go. And we can go from there. <laughs> All right. And if Dayton has read my article, maybe he wants to come in and chime in on it. You're going to put the poor man to work? <laughs> no, let him be. Let him, let him have a Sunday morning where he just can just say, fuck you, without having to worry about, you know. Like he doesn't say that to us anyway? <laughs> well. Go for it. All right. Ask Dayton. Number 111. Did you see who's here? No. Our special guest this week, none other than the man, the myth, the legend, author extraordinaire, just ask him, Dayton Ward. Up in here, up in here. He's delicious. The man is a sage. Dayton Ward is here. Hi, Dayton. Hello, Dayton. Hello, Newman. Mark just handed him his complimentary gin and tonic for the G&T show, so that's oh, always good. Oh, that's good. Firefly Vodka. See, if we knew he was coming, we would have taken him to the green room with the green women. God damn it, go read the ass, Dayton. Oh, Dayton. Dayton. Dayton Ward is grumpy cat. <laughs> Dayton Ward, troller of trolls. He's such a diva. Pay attention, Ask Dayton fans. Everybody got their pad and pencil right? Yes, I'm ready. Would you like to be a part of the Ask Dayton experience? Send your questions to hosts at gntshow.com. That's right. We've got defense posts. <laughs> Dear Dayton, you're a writer and a reader. <sighs> starting out strong. <laughs> Recently, I read a piece online from no one you know, I'm sure. Really? You know, right away, I'm going to take issue with the author of this. I, Dayton knows a lot of people. Where a character had an accent. The accent was, to my mind, rendered crudely and incorrectly, and frankly, it was kind of insulting. NB. What is NB? Nobody's business? I don't what know. NB. I have family members by marriage who have this accent. They don't talk the way this writer wrote. Okay. In in Trek, we all we have all manner of accents and dialects, from the Britishisms of Malcolm Reed and Julian Bashir to Irish Miles O'Brien to Trip Tucker's Florida Pandal hacks, Panhandle accent to Pavel Chakov's Russian in, inventions to Scottish Montgomery Scott. Okay, hey, I just want to um, point out something here that as an editor, I would have sent this back to them. From two, and, and this is just me in my editing. From two is a measurement of distance. Find a better way of like maybe as diverse as just saying <laughs> by the way we chased Dayton out of the ch uh, out of the <laughs> chat room plus aliens speaking English excuse me Federation standard might or might not have accents if they are truly attempting to speak it without using a universal translator so my question is how do you render accents does a southerner always have drop G's do Bostonians such as myself always lose their R's does Bashir say blimey a lot or do you duck and avoid them. Bonus question. Are there any accents you'd like to see, well, here in Star Trek that we haven't heard yet? Do you think Trek will be able to handle Romanians or even Klingons of Long Island? 
<laughs> I know who this is from. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Dayton's response. I think we might have finally reached peak ass Dayton. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we have a decent number of Star Trek characters who insist on talking funny. Or maybe it's that the normal ones and everybody else is just boring. Whatever. From Montgomery Scott whining about his wee bairns to Chekhov spreading the Russian on way too thick as he waxes historical about his country of origin's contributions to anything and everything. And even to Trip Tucker twanging along as he tells people, keep your shirt on, Lieutenant. Trek's definitely got a chairs of colorful accents and dialogues. That's all fine and dandy for the screen, but as far as writing goes, yikes. Yeah, I want to know. Of course, since you posted the question to me about my writing, I have to assume that you haven't read anything I've written, or you'd already have the answer to your query. (laughs) (laughs) So while I work at coming to terms with this obvious snubbing of my alleged contributions to the published word, let's ponder this. Oh my. (laughs) Anybody else hear the whip snap? This is. There was a time when rendering accents and dialects in prose was the thing to do. Yeah. It was a way to give different characters their own identity. But it's a practice that nowadays has largely fallen in favor. You might see it every so often, but, it by, but it's by no means the norm. And you're likely to get back notes from your editor politely asking you to knock that shit off. I mean, you'd think it sounds good in theory and maybe even fun, right? Maybe on the other hand, on the on the other hand, it's just as likely to be a distraction to the reader and can be a definite mood killer depending on the scene. I mean, just imagine one of those steamy sequences from Fifty Shades of Grey, but the whole thing was written from the perspective of a redneck. What? You can't picture that? Well, here, <laughs> let me help. Oh I'm my god! Including an excerpt from Chapter Eight, aka the first time Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele get it on. Why? Pretty much just so I can hear Nick read really shitty erotica while trying to emulate Larry the Cable Guy. Oh my god! <laughs> do you have any idea what I'm about gonna do? To, does to you? He adds, caressing my chin, as any fool could plainly see. <laughs> the moosles inside the deepest, darkest parts of me clenching the dongest. <laughs> delicious fashion and any fool can plainly see the pain is so sweet and sharp and hankering to close my eyes but I'm hypnotized by his gray eyes staring fervently into mine leaning down he kisses me his lips is demanding firm and slow molding mine he starts unbuttoning my shirt while he places feather like kisses across my jaw <laughs> my chin and the corners of my mouth slowly he peels it off me and lets it fall to the floor he stands he stands back and gazes at me. I'm in the pale blue lacy puffic puffic fit bra. Thank heavens. Oh Anna, he breathes. You have to dog on this bright purdy hide, pale and flawless. I was hankering to kiss every single inch of it. Ah, oh, flush. Oh man. <laughs> woof did he woof woof oh, did he say couldn't make me love. Ah, well, does anything he be hankering. <laughs> Grasp my hair tie, pulls it free. Grasp my hair, ca- ca- cascades down around my shoulders. Yeah, that leaves a pretty bitter aftertaste, right? <laughs> so to avoid problems like this, and instead of writing dialogue in a way that overtly or directly evokes an accent, I turn to a cl- references to a way a ta- character oh, talks. God, this is the best one ever. <laughs> now we know why he left. <laughs> <laughs> For example, Spock's dialogue is always very formal, with right. few of any contractions. <clears throat> I need to take a sip here. Hold on. I got I got all dry mouth oh. reading that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. That's, that this is awesome. <laughs> wow. Wow. If there's a word with two syllables and it has a cinnamon, 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 <laughs> cinnamon with four or more syllables, I'm almost always going for the bigger stick. And don't forget that he tends to drag out explanations, even to even the simplest questions before somebody like McCoy tells him to get on with it. <laughs> if a character has acknowledged an acknowledged accent or speaks with a distinctive dialect, I'll refer to that in the description rather than dialogue. Something like Kirk leaned over the open channel as 
Scott muttered to himself, his thick robe becoming all but indecipherable as he grew more frustrated. Mm -hmm. I also try to focus more on speech patterns or phrases, idioms, and or slang they might employ. So, that means Scotty gets a lot of I and lad and lassie peppered in with his dialogue. And if I have the doctor, if I have Dr. Phlox asking Trip Tucker how he's feeling, I might have the engineer reply, I'm feeling as fine as a frog's hair split three ways, Doc. Yep. Yeah. As far as accents I'd like to see, or is that here in Star mm-hmm. Trek, we're sadly overdue with some for somebody from Boston's South Side, or maybe Jersey. Why? Because they can get Mike <laughs> Sorrentino, aka the situation, in a movie or TV episode as a red shirt. What? <laughs> you asked. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Best that's great. Dayton oh my god, ever. That, that that was probably the best Dayton ever. It just made me laugh so hard. Thank you to the person who wrote that to begin with because you you provided him with the ultimate platform because that was fucking awesome. That, that was, he may quit Nick, he may well quit done. after this. He may quit what? after this because where's where is there to go but down from there? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, too funny. Okay. Oh, thank you, Dayton. That was that. Thank you. That was awesome. Uh, and for all those excited about the Fifty Shades of Grey movie, oh, I'm nice. saying no. I'm saying this to be honest and not. I really hope it's good for you guys because you deserve it. You, they, they are some of the most diehard fans. Yeah. That chick is smoking hot. So there is that, and that guy is pretty good looking. So. Casting wise, doesn't look like they did a bad job. Oh. It's still Fifty Shades of Grey. Fire torpedoes. <laughs> Say hi to your ma, Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grim, that was awesome. Okay, that that would be. Think about that. That would be really funny. Just to come in with. A, well, have you seen the Scottish Star Trek, the old skit, the one that they did from um, what television show was that on uh, the UK version? Have you seen it? So, uh, Matthew Anderson, you have a job. Find the link to the Scottish Star Trek because that's fucking hilarious. Um, thank you, Dayton. That was that was hilarious. That was probably one of the just <laughs> I laughed through the whole damn thing. Uh, we as the transporter. <laughs> which you know what though it was bugging me because one of my scenes uh, even in my fan fiction I thought I want to be able to get through to my readers that this person has a slighter accent or somebody has a thicker accent um, without having to really and here's the other thing I actually have a Cation character where are they you know she's like she's a cat so she tends to roll her R's a little bit but you can't write that in the context it would of, get annoying it gets it got really annoying and it's one of the things that I got really hung up on was I thought I have to pull that out and I just need to make a reference that that's how she speaks and then leave it up to the reader's imagination. But it's a really well, good It's tip. like reading the, the, the books with the Gorn in it. That can be <sighs> Yes, it can be. It, it can, can be. be. Very the long distracting. Is. Right. It's very distracting. I mean, how many times do you have to, I mean, there's so many so many ways that you can tell them that they, uh, the reader that they hiss. We know, we know that. But you can't, you, I don't know. It's very, it's, it can be very, very frustrating as a writer. And that's a tip that I really wanted to know. So I thought it was a great question. And I thought that it just gave Dayton the ultimate platform to make his point, which was, yeah, I think I'm going to go back now and completely revamp that piece because it is distracting. Well, it's pissing of me off. And had to piss a good morning, off. Lamb. And it, I'm sure it pissed a reader off. Yeah, well, yeah, and it's a good point. I mean, I, I, I definitely learned something too. I mean, it's better to write naturally and let the reader's imagination, or the, in, in terms of an audio production, let the a- voice actor handle it themselves you know right I also think there's a, if you're writing a Montgomery Scott, the fans know how he talks, so you can you can in Chekhov and things like that. You know what I mean? But then Terry, if it's a character like your Cation, yeah. um, it, 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 it's walking because people don't know their voice. You know what I mean? It's it's so which much why, easier with a character whose voice we know. Well, which is why you probably want to to describe the voice a little bit more up front before you even hear them speaking. That way, it's already it's already suggested it's already been implanted into their brains that okay so ours are going to be or yeah or, or go the smarter route and just make them all human <laughs> no yeah i can't do that my cation she's she's too awesome i can't do that besides there's an entire sequence where bill is walking behind her and he's kind of hypnotized by her tail <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to know 
<laughs> he, he's one of those guys that will try anything once, right? Oh, yes. Okay, so, With yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> he, he, yes, my my bill is a... He makes his father look conservative. Tame. Um, yeah, well, no, it's just conservative. I mean, Riker was never Siamese. tame, but, but Bill is definitely pansexual. He will. Or as he, one, he, my friend used to say it, I'll try anything once, twice if I like it. Twice if I like it. That's kind of that's kind of Bill. <laughs> 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 and uh, so, yeah. But like yeah, the, that's a, like we the engineer about on uh, Titan. I, uh, precisely. Or you mean, yeah, like Rahav. Why can't I pronounce his name right? Oh. Rahav Matthew Anderson, you're so right about Secretary. About whom? The movie Secretary. Oh, yeah. Uh, James Spader and Maggie Gyllenhaal. The only time I've ever been turned on by Maggie Gyllenhaal. Oh, yeah. No, I never saw. Um, so thank you, Dayton, because that was really, really, really Insightful fun. And have a great and, day, yeah, Grammy. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, sir. Bye, Brother Graham. And um, so following up on the... Real quick, aside yeah. from the girl that's playing the, the female in Fifty Shades of Grey, anybody else massively crushing on that AT&T girl, Lily? That ma- um, oh, my God, Alan. Totally. That, okay, good. Right? Totally. Isn't she adorbs? Yeah, he, he just... Every time that commercial comes on, he goes, I know I don't have to say it. I said, but you're going to anyway. <laughs> she's adorable. She's adorable. <laughs> And she's she's just the perfect she she's just the perfect read for that part too because she's he's not dumb right she's the smart character too and snarky I like her she's snark she's got snark and anybody more coffee so uh, oh goodbye Starfleet mom didn't know you were in the chat room I apologize I will play Star Trek online engineering here warp engines are online course laid in captain engage your ship. Your crew. Move out. Your destiny. So following up on uh, some Star Trek Online news, did Mike's already touched on <clears throat> the um, dilithium week. Oh, were we recording then, Mike? I don't remember. I think we were recording. Oh, but- please okay. tell me that we've been recording this entire time. No, no, no. I meant like, were we were we actually discussing the, I think, I the, think so. the dilithium week before we started the show? Was it part of our pre-show? No, that was part of the show. It was yeah. part of the show. All right. Well, there's a dilithium bonus week uh, that got extended or by till Wednesday or Thursday, correct? So we still have four yeah. More days to grind dilithium in the game to earn as much as we can. The continuation of the fifth year anniversary um, is still going on. I don't know why I said that the way I did. That was kind of stupid. And uh, I'm still kind of grinding. It's a the, month um, long celebration. It, and we'll need a month because to get the the Vardwar set is that what it is? Um. Well, yeah, because every week they release a new component, a new component of it, which means you can redo the the episode once a week and get a different. Yeah, I still need to run it a couple of times. Yep, and uh, there's we're we're going to be talking a little bit more about that. We're not going to go into too much of Star Trek Online today because we're actually going to be interviewing Al Rivera, and we'll get into that um, later today. And when we'll probably post that what this week. Um, because of everything that we have going on today, tomorrow, and yeah, so uh, it probably won't be posted until midweek. Mid 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 to late week. Yeah, because I know that we've got a couple of other things going on. And some of them Something get priority. Very big. Some some Literally of them get priority. Right yeah. Horizon. Yep. Yep. Very excited about that. So that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna pop in there as well. So we'll talk a little bit um, about Star Trek Online now. But if you really want to know what's going on, and we're gonna be able to talk to Al about all of the new stuff that's come out in the, the um, anniversary uh, release, and finally get to talk about some of the spoilers that we I've been holding on to beginning now that we're all up to date on the story, and I've got. Beth to level 60, we can kind of now about it. I'm really excited because I loved it. It's good stuff. Yeah. Star Trek! Now, uh, this week's Star Trek poll over at StarTrek.com, which was, uh, which Star Trek original series character would you, would be the most fun to have around on the weekend? Interesting. <laughs> Kevin Riley. <laughs> <laughs> What are the options? Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Uhura, Scotty, Chekhov, Sulu, and Chapel. It depends oh, on what your cake that is. List. <laughs> Thank you. I was thinking Trip Tucker would be a hoot to hang out with for a weekend. 
Well, this was original series, so I thought, yeah. well, we could always open it up. But okay, so open. original series, I would probably have to say either Chapel or 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 Scotty. I I would pick Scar- Scotty in a heartbeat. Yeah. How about heartbeat. you, Nick? Well, it depends. What's your kink? <laughs> well, <laughs> Chapel for some things, and uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> and, and Scotty for the other. <laughs> I know that's my I thinking. Ha- exactly. I couldn't hang with Scotty. Oh, okay. And I know that. Probably McCoy. McCoy, I could see sitting out at the, the grill, having yeah. some drinks. Just, Couple of, uh, just shooting the shit. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Just yeah, kinda, hear, the war, hear, hear the war stories of the working in hospitals. Yeah. Prescribe some, some, some over-the-counter meds. <laughs> just, you know, sitting there, kick back, cowboy boots on. You know, he's got his cowboy boots up. Just making a pot of his special beans with the just relaxed, recipe. yeah, just relaxed and and enjoying the the, the, the time. Yeah, yeah. See, but, I would I would think that it would be fun because Scotty's the kind of guy. I mean, what he 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 really likes maritime, so he actually has a boat. He he's he's a sailor. Oh, sun sail? No, you're not the only one that did that. Way. If Janice Rand was on there, oh, I would choose Janice Rand. <laughs> she wasn't on the list, unfortunately. She was not. But on the if list. we're going to open it up, yeah, let's, let's open, open it up, up to the other characters now. If, From if Enterprise, the opportunity to 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 hang, you know, hang with somebody for a day or two. Who, what character you would think would be fun to have? Just from Enterprise, Trip Tucker. Although Malcolm can be kind of interesting too, but Trip Tucker. Mourn. For, from DS9. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You would come back, you would be hurting. You know it, right? A weekend with Morn. I know. Yeah, that would God, be that fun. Sounds, that actually sounds like a great title for an episode. A weekend with Morn. <laughs> You know what? If if anyone from 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 uh, uh, Simon and Schuster is listening, I want an ebook called "A Weekend with Morn." Come on, yeah. that has got to be epic storytelling right there. Dayton, get on that. I'll tell you who I wouldn't want to hang with, and that's Harry Kim. Why? Something bad is going to happen. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that uh, true. I was gonna say, you know, you probably couldn't take the whining of yeah, <laughs> Taji Station. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is is isn't Harry Kim the Luke Skywalker of Star Trek? Actually, I always he, thought it was Paris. Here's one for you. Hang with for a weekend. Barkley on the holodeck. No. Oh, he's got the good shit too. Yeah. No, Terry. Think about it. You're gonna have a lot of fun with Barkley on the on the holodeck. Now, if you want to have a lot of fun, Malcolm and and Julian on the holodeck. There. Now that would be fa- or even Dax and Kira. The, oh the- no, I'm not hanging with Garrick. No, he's no, my no. favorite I would, character. I would, but I would no. hang with like Dax and Kira in the holodeck. That would be fun. But just 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 so you could you could totally laugh at Kira and her complete clueless discomfort. About- yes. Oh my God, I would love that. I would love. Oh, that. I would hang just- with Hosh. But there would be no anyway. Yeah. Well, let's see. From TNG, I think Riker would be cool yeah. to hang out with. Um, from DS9, um, more. You know what? I'm gonna go with. Um, oh, um, I know the actor's name. I can't. For the life of me, I can't think of, of, of the character's name, which is like an odd reversal. Call him Meanie. Oh, yeah. O'Brien. 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 Thank yeah. you. I would hang Miles, out with O'Brien. Yes, Miles, Miles and Julian on the holiday. Miles and Julian yeah. doing the... Uh, Both of them together. That would their be battles and... The, epic. Yeah. Uh, with the I, I'd probably be Floyd versus. or whatever the guy's name in that one episode with the fighter jets. You know, I'd probably be the guy who, who ends up biting it. That they end guys, up toasting Would you guys want to do like the, uh, the, the holodeck, the, the 50 sci-fi holodeck stuff with uh, on Voyager? You know what I'm talking about? The Captain Proton stuff? Oh, yeah. I thought yeah. you meant the eye. Irish town. I was like, no. oh God, no, no, no. Uh, Captain Proton. Yeah, the Captain yeah. Proton would be fun, and Actually, Paris cool would be thing. my choice for yeah, the, for Voyager. The, the Paris, the Paris. Uh, oh, the bar. Ho- yeah, the bar. That would be fun too. The bar would be fun with the pool table, martinis, or something like that. Yeah, the I would probably hang out or... at Vic Fontaine's place. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That would be fun. And and at TNG, I would totally do the um, Dixon Hill. <laughs> I would right I would, on. I would do the Dixon Hill stuff that with Picard, especially with Picard. That would be fucking awesome. Terry would take up, be playing the role of uh, of uh, what, what's his cousin's name? Um, oh man, my memory is horrible this morning. Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Mine Guinan good. had played the role. Oh god. <laughs> I have I, I, her action figure in that role too. I, in in TNG, I think I I'm would his hang. cousin. Uh, yeah. Oh man, can't think of the name. In TNG, I think I would hang with. Uh, uh, I mean, in the original series, I, I would want to spend as much time as possible with Marlena Moreau. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. For yeah. You. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, How you, know, you doing, in, Lieutenant? In TNG, I still stick with, with the original series. It would be Scotty. In TNG, it would have to be Riker, just because he could do so many different things, even if it's just a fucking 48 just hour listening poker to him play jazz. Tournament. And of course, in continues, it would be Ensign, uh, Lieutenant Smith. I don't know. That would be hard between Smith and um, and um, McKenna. I would just wow. Oh no! I oh. I, I, I would. Mike, you totally missed uh, you. I pulled a Mike. I pulled a Mike when I met her. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled a co- total and complete Mike. <laughs> it was not even. I couldn't even talk. <laughs> it's true. I was there. I was a witness. She is just. So First of all, she's a force of nature. She like blows in and it's like, woof, you get sucked up. And honestly, photos and video, just there is no justice that is done to her. I was like, oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. We're talking about about uh, Damn you, Manana. We're talking about the the, the lovely lady who plays uh, McKenna, or are we talking about Joan? Okay. Yeah, Michelle Speck. Just making sure we were talking about the same person. Yes. And uh, so we have. Have your TOS. We have your TNG. Mike, we got your TNG. Uh, my TNG would have been Riker. I would have loved to, you know, hang out with him in a bar, so he, listening to him play jazz. Nick, I'm just kind of stunned at how boring Mike is. He's listening to Riker play jazz. Well, what I, I, I would. I would also Bartley like would have also definitely I, been fun, but I think and to spend you know. a weekend with Picard, like doing archaeology, would be fun. I would like that. Mm-hmm. He's such a grump. Who Picard? Yes. Now when he's Ex- digging in the dirt, but now when he's around old shit, right? It would be a blast. Well, I wouldn't would call Bosch old shit. Hello, thank you. Like I said, when when Picard's digging in the dirt, he's actually kind of cool. <laughs> he's a happy guy. That's kind of cruel of you to call her dirt. I did not call her dirt. Um, <sighs> they together they were digging in the dirt. So Rutting in the dirt. They were so both from, pretty happy. From TOS, <laughs> um, you, said, you said McCoy. No, uh, yeah, McCoy. TNG. <sighs> Boy, nobody really fucking jumps out at to me as I think with Riker though you it would be a mix of both fun and also leisure. Yeah, he he's not going to burn himself out. Um, and there's a choice of activities, right? You there is a poker. choice of activities. Yeah, you could play poker. You could go fishing. You could do it. You know anything along those lines? Uh, he's like Mister Alaska. <laughs> no, I want to hang with Guinan. Wouldn't that be fucking awesome? She'd be spending all of her time listening to you. No. Oh, it would Guinan. be like a, a two-day counselor appointment. Guinan, <laughs> Guinan knows how to get down. Yeah, Don't be fooled. She did try to scratch out uh, hubba hubba. Um, she did try to scratch out Hugh's eyes. So, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> what about... Fantastic picture in the chat room. Okay, Thank you, already, Matt. We already know about your DS9. You said Morn. Actually, it would be Bashir and it, O'Brien. Bashir and O'Brien? Yeah, to be a part of that. All right. What about Enterprise? Oh, she. Okay. And Voyager? But it would, but it would be a date. Um, Enterprise. <laughs> You know, my initial reaction, quite honestly, surprises me. The first thing that I thought of was Chakotay. From Enterprise? Oh, I'm sorry. From Voyager. Oh, from Voyager? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. I could see that. Because he's an interesting guy. Yeah. And I could see, like, because of his... uh, Tom would probably get on my nerves, but Chakotay is also a historian. And and he's an interesting guy with, you know, quite the the past. Again, it's kind of that McCoy thing. I think it would be a low price pressure just hanging out you know what i mean he's a guy mm-hmm. you're you're watching the game with that's he and mccoy are watching the game with guys yeah i can see that i myself would i would i would hang with janeway no doubt about it janeway, janeway and i would get along far too well and yes i know she's psycho but that's i was gonna say I but then her psychosis kicks in and i love her i love her i would hang with janeway oh yeah if and, i wasn't uh, scared of her i'd say balana <laughs> Uh, that's a good point. See, and the doctor would drive me crazy. And I, seven of nine. Um, no. uh, I, can, I can't even, de- even in my fantasies, I can't hang with her. <laughs> okay. So. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I, I know uh, my limits, even in fantasy land. And McKenna's still staring at me and I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. What about uh, Enterprise? Did we already, did you already choose? I said Hoshi, oh, but Hoshi. it would be a date. Right. And Mike, what about you? Trip. A trip. Yeah. yeah. I'm not I'm not sure. I think I think it would have to be Archer. I think it would have to be Archer. Go to a water polo. <laughs> Ensign <game>. Daniels. <laughs> oh my god, I'd shoot him. 
fucking crewman Daniels. No, no I want to hang with Shran for a weekend. Oh, yeah. there you go. That's that. There you go. That's yeah. exactly what I would do. Or, yeah. yeah. Now, now, can I have more than one? <laughs> sure, why not? Oh, then I'm sure be, you could, Terry. Then it would be Reed and, and Hayes. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> we know what's on the agenda for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, boys, I brought the oils. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> you got Hoshi. I'm just saying. Yeah, mine was a nice romantic eight. You're over there 50 shading it up. 50 shades of <laughs> track is what this is. <laughs> Actually, can you think about it? I mean, once they got over their, their mutual mistrust of one another... Um, you know, they, I could see them being pretty good friends. Yeah. And uh, talk about watching a soccer game with both. That'd be fucking hilarious. Especially because Hayes would totally needle him through the whole thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I would want. I would want just that entertain that weekend of entertainment of these two guys just kind of trash talking each other for a weekend. I would love that. I would love to see those two in a risk tournament against each other. <gasps> I need to write that. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. Fun discussion. Yep. All right. That that was that was that was really fun. I enjoyed that discussion. We uh, have any announcements, Mike? Um, oh, I do. I do. Okay. I do. Oh my God, everybody! You have to go buy Star. Trek Trek the Next Generation Takedown. I command it. You have to. I'm about halfway through this book right now, and it's did you so see much. I command fun. it. I did. The boots command you. Go buy this book. Go to the Star Trek. Go to the Amazon. Click click on that that little link down there, and then go and buy Star Trek: The Next Generation Takedown by John Jack- Jackson Miller. Um, just because it's so it's so much fun. I can't give away anything about this book because the reader knows what's. It's kind of like a Columbo thing where the reader kind of knows what's going on from the beginning of the uh, the episode, but the characters don't. That makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah, go ahead, Nick. No, that t- that makes total sense. Yeah. It, so the characters don't really know what's happening, but the reader kind of already does know what's happening, and 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 so there's really no surprise in that regard. But it's still really fucking tense. <laughs> It's really, and I have yet to try to cu- kind of figure out why it's still called the Next Generation because so far I haven't we haven't gotten I haven't gotten to the point where the the Enterprise gets in here yet. Yeah, but so far it's all been like Aventine and Dax and Riker and some really funky shit that's going on. And holy crap, holy holy crap! So buy the book; it's awesome. I have to say I'm very appreciative of uh, his style of writing. It's a very very easy to read without um, you know. It's just a, a really great Star Trek book. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, you know, you're, it's one of those things where you're a little nervous because you know that this is a person who hasn't really written for that genre before. He's written a lot of Star Wars. So I was a little nervous about how... You were just waiting for someone to pull out a lightsaber and well, decapitate. You just never know. You just, <laughs> you just never know whether or not the person really has a grasp of the lore of your own fandom, right? Mm-hmm. You bring somebody in from the outside... If, if uh, unless they're uh, nothing to worry about, he he got it. They they educated him well. If he didn't know, that's all I have to say is he they, he knows everything that happens to these characters in the books that that came before it. And the editing was great. It was just didn't Scott work on this one? Did Scott Pearson? Work yes, on this he, one? he he did at, uh, copy edit it. Well, I'll tell you, it it was just it's just great. And um, like I said, I'm really really picky about how characters. You know, we all are. These are characters we love, and we're kind of sensitive about and I was a little worried about how Dax was going to be written because I'm very sensitive about how Dax is is written and yeah no it's oh my god you've got to buy this book it's good um, right on. um okay uh let's see announcements um it's been dr- brought to my attention that nobody knows that we have a Patreon page oh <laughs> I don't even know what that is it's kind of like um a place where you can like donate to our to our site uh through on on a regular monthly basis so it's kind of like supporting supporting uh, an artist or or a group over a prolonged period of time so it's kind of like uh it's almost like see a, a PBS pledge you pledge so much and then you pay it out over the course of of the year is that neat like that. so people weren't aware that we had one so so um, I just wanted to mention the fact that we do have one. Um, also, um, let's see. Get to Stovacore. Our season premiere is out. 
uh, you can check out Revenge. It's for dinner um, over on gatesofstovercore.com. It'll, a link will be in the show notes. Um, Tales from the DMZ. I've been editing that. That should be out later this week. Also, um, Oren did a, a wrote up a, a very interesting story, and uh, hopefully, my editing didn't destroy it. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else. Um, Blood of the Near, we're still looking for um, uh, voice work, so please uh, email staff at yeah, Bon you know Rom Show. You know the week I had, Mike. I'm yeah. sorry. I just, did, did, I just didn't have time. No problem. Um, but yeah, so like I said, we're still looking for auditions, so if you're interested in joining the cast, uh, staff at Bon Rom Show. Dot com um starfinder we're we've got a few scripts that are getting ready um i think there'll be another mini sewed soon um i think that i've covered everything but i may be forgetting something but forgive me if i am but yeah i think that's it well, well, congratulations once again to the peeps from Massively Overpowered on the full funding of your Kickstarter. I know that you now have a stretch goal in place for $75,000. You've got 27 days left. Please give them uh, support. You know, I love Massively very much because these were great people that I got to work with when it was part of AOL. And now that AOL has shut down all of its gaming uh, uh, journalist sites, uh, they've decided to kind of go independent which I think is fantastic news and uh, really great news for the continuation of ethical gaming journalism that they've always expressed. So uh, Massively Overpowered, and I think it's MassivelyOP.com. Uh, their site is being created as we speak, and uh, you can follow them on their Facebook page as well. Uh, Bree Royce is the editor-in-chief over there, and she's a, a wonderful talent and a great teacher. So congrats oh, to all of you. I'm very happy. And Elliot, who currently covers the Star Trek Online stuff, will be able to continue with the Star Trek Online stuff now that they are fully funded, which is nice. And one more thing real quick. Um, check out uh, Trek News Network. Yes. Nick's article is on there now. I've got uh, an article. I think, Terry, you've got an article out there as well. I do have one. I had the uh, the initial article when AOL cut ties with Massively or with Joystick. Joystick was the parent company for Worlds of Work or the WoW Insider as well as Massively. And all three divisions were cut by AOL, even though they were money makers. We, we, we don't understand why they cut it because their readership had shown double-digit growth over the past three years. Kind of so, sad. Yeah, check out Terry's article. Check out Nick's article. I've got um, an article there now and another one that should be hitting soon. Uh, science science fiction to science fact is is the, the, the premise of, of these articles uh, where we look at, um, at some of the inspirations for some of these emerging technologies that are coming out. I've done uh, Holodex and this one that's coming is all on augmented reality and I talk about uh, uh, everything from Terminator to Iron Man yep. so interesting and for there's a couple of people who are saying you know it would be nice Terry if you could start writing it massively again I would love to um, the, the the thing is though is of course because now they've really really condensed the amount of budget that they have because of the Kickstarter I mean really to be honest with you guys this isn't it isn't a lot of money uh, believe it $75,000 really isn't that much to continue continue on with a full service 24 hour a day news site and um, so I'm I'm in the, I'm in the back seat I am not involved in that we're just trying to get the 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 massively writers who were there at the time up and running and working again and Elliot is a wonderful writer I adore his stuff and he's a stow player and he loves the game and he's still going to continue doing the stow coverage on a monthly basis now that they're fully funded if they they get stretch goals, though. They have other they have other goals in mind. I don't know if it involves me, but they do know that I'm available. So there. And cool. like Mike said, go to uh, TNN and give traffic there. Um, Please. That was one of the reasons that I did that. We want to get them some, and it, it also helps our show uh, in the in, in the long run and repost them the articles by Terry, Mike, and myself so that it, the, the more you can help us get our name out there, the easier it becomes for us to also get 
higher profile interviews and ah yes and passes and things like that to bring you an even better show right subscribe us subscribe to us on facebook follow us on twitter stalk us or like us or on facebook and uh across all of the other YouTube. Yes, YouTube. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're trying to all get that to... Yeah. All of our social media links are available on our website, correct? Right yes, up. I do believe We're so. We're on Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and YouTube. Yep. And support us through Patreon. That would be great. All right, everybody. If you need to email us, you can email us at host at gntshow.com. You can uh, tweet me at Terry Lynn S. That's T-E-R-I-L-Y-N-N S is in Sam. Nick, where can people follow you on Twitter? At Gettysburg 7. And Mike? I'm Ceridium S-T-O. S-O-R-I-E-D-E-M. S-T-O. S-T-O. <laughs> <laughs> and you can follow the uh, site itself, the GNT show, at Sunday GNT on Twitter. Again, thanks, everybody. We will see you next week for episode 179. Until then, live long and prosper. Kabla! Jolan True Twat Waffles. Twat Waffles! Music for the G&T Show is provided by Warp 11, Andrew Allen, Grethor, and Five Year Mission. This has been a Busy Little Beaver production. I'm gonna take a five year tour. Only go where no man's gone before. I'm gonna travel. On my own man Represent the human race And we make this A happy place To fully go where no man's gone before I think I sang that line once before But I'm not too sure Won't be so happy, can't you see A zero G Be no cons or Kobe Yashi.